Captain's Log, April 15th, 2087, Starship HMCS Tignish. We are arriving at the Kepler 442 system to conduct a routine survey and check in with the local satellite as part of our AI training mission. Captain, do you have to go through the entire mission brief every time we make a jump? We'll be done the mission halfway through that long-winded speech of yours. I don't need to be reminded I'm a trainee every single system we enter. Oh, come on, Lisa. I like doing the logs. Makes me feel like a captain in one of those old sci-fi holovids. Besides, it's protocol. And you're all about protocol. Okay, okay. Normally you're right, Zarin. But trainee flights are different. The last AI I trained went on to become the main system AI for the Celestial Forge herself. Lisa here has that same kind of potential, and I want to give her the best shot at getting a Sky Titan of her own. While I appreciate the sentiment, I'm not sure a massive hulk like a Sky Titan is really my style. I think I'd prefer something sportier, like an Alberta class. Though anything would be better than this old wreck. Oh, come on. The Tignish isn't that bad. It flies like a converted mining carriage. That's because it is a converted mining carriage. Uh, it, it is not, Zarin. She's just been a while between regular refits and upgrades. Look, it's our last stop. Once we get back, Lisa will have enough flight out time to get into the academy, and we can move on to our next assignment. We just need to contact First Settlement, pick up their email packet, and then head home. Besides, the commander there is an old friend of mine. You like him. Speaking of First Settlement, I'm not picking up the station beacon or their antenna. What? That's odd. We should be in range. But I am picking up another signal. I... I don't think it's friendly. How can you be sure? Because they just opened fire on us. Trespassing in our system. Cut your engines, disarm your weapons, and prepare to be boarded. Your vessel and all aboard now belong to us. Resistant, you will be destroyed. You have two minutes to comply. They've disabled the jump drive. Even if I could outrun them, which I can't. Leaving the system is no longer an option. Long-range communications are being jammed. What do we do? Damn it. Let me think a second. Okay, we're close to Clat Kepler 442B. The TIG might not be able to outrun that monster, but she's a lot smaller and lighter. Uh, if we can make it to the planet, lure them into the upper atmosphere, the air resistance and gravity should start dragging them down long before the TIG. So, we make a break for it, skim the planet, and hope they get stuck. Yeah. Good plan, with one small modification. You two are ejecting in the escape pods. What? Lisa, no, that's... I started doing the calculation as soon as you mentioned getting close to the planet. The necessary maneuvers to pull this off will be a lot easier without having to worry about squishing the crew with G-forces. I have a better chance of getting far enough away to escape the jamming and get a signal out without you two aboard. And you will have a much better chance on a habitable planet than an old scout ship that's shot full of holes. It's the course of action that has the highest chance of survival for the entire crew. Including me. Protocol states. I I'm aware of protocol, Lisa. I taught it to you! Alright, alright. Give us 15 seconds from, from when the pod's bay doors open to get let us get clear, then punch it. Hopefully it'll take a minute to try and figure out what we're up to rather than just immediately open fire. No matter what happens, don't stop and don't look back. Alright, all systems are surrendered to Lisa's control. Let's go.
Pods are hot. Punching out in four, three, and luckily seven. One!